Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India with you and I am just uh, trying to answer some of the questions what you have posted already in the Google Doc and some in the chat box. So <clears throat> all the questions uh, cannot be answered uh, right now because there are some numerical questions which will be uh, which will be given in the in the, in the forum. The answers will be given in the forum. Some of the questions are already answered. Okay, so let us start one by one, and then I think in the in the Google Doc, what I found that there are twenty seven posts. And in YouTube and chat box, I think Kanti, you just find out how many things are there. So if I go by one by one, in the first one, uh, basically are, um, so okay, I am just uh, avoiding the name because of, because of time. So I like to learn and watch your, your live classes to know more knowledge. So okay, thank you very much. So watch and uh, complete the course, and then maybe in future some more, uh, some more uh, lectures in the same subject will be uploaded, but not yet planned. Second is for a given petrochemical unit, your time time is okay. So this is a basically some kind of calculation needed. So fine. So Kranti and Shobik is there. They will uh, they will calculate it and then um, they'll show it to me. And after that, it will be posted. I did not understand week four assignment question five, six, and seven. Could you explain briefly? I think week four <clears throat> assignment questions are already explained and posted there. Please see this. If you uh, still have problem, then again you. Rage, then our TA will take care. Then complete uh, solution of question number six. Okay. So, so big, just check that complete solution is given or not. If not given, just try to provide this one. Next one is how to calculate the impact area which have to take while making calculation of various losses. Yes. This is a good question, but it is again a very uh, difficult question at the same time because finding out the damage area is not easy one. For example, for some chemical uh, chemical incident, for example, leakage of gas or something like this, uh, what will happen particularly that there are certain formula which is available and some software are able, software also available, which help you in calculating the damage area. Particularly, just think of a, think of a suppose cylinder-like structure, and there is a hole, a particular circular hole, or so something like this. And then, uh, uh, then uh, I think Aloha software is there, which will help you in calculating the damage area. And in addition, there is Dow Fire and Explosion Index is there from Dow Fire and Explosion Index also. Directly, the um, there is a procedure to calculate the damage area, but in manufacturing a uh, soft float type where discrete uh, discrete process are there, so there such a kind of formulation is not possible. So what is needed basically it should be an experience based uh, work, uh, and uh, and a team may be um, a team may be prepared to find out the damage area. Mostly on-site and off-site uh, uh, two as, uh, consequences to be looked into. On-site means where accident or incident has taken place and off-site means beyond the uh, incident place. So that means uh, when your, um, your, your, your basically loss or consequence will be societal in nature, uh, that societal risk is involved, then upside is important. Otherwise, uh, individual risk will help you in uh, in basically computing um, the consequence because one part of risk is the consequence. So fine. 
So this way you have to do. So sometimes you require to go for expert knowledge. Sometimes there will be some mathematical model or sometimes if you have historical data, you can, uh, you can develop some uh, for, uh, probability model maybe over, ta over time or over distance. Where, uh, that means within this distance, the probability of happening such kind of, uh, such kind of losses are known. Then, uh, then your uh, next question is the course material is tough. The mathematics is very high order. The course material is not very relevant of thermal power station. So I think uh, it is uh, perhaps for you it is like this. But to me, the course material is uh, not tough because that probably we have given uh, the best possible combination considering the heterogeneous uh, nature of the participants, there are many students, many uh, that practitioners from field. So that, uh, that sense basically uh, we are doing this. Just give me one second, just one second. I'm just. Okay, sorry for one second disturbance. So the mathematics are of high order. Primarily we have given the mathematics related to that reliability part as well as the card set and that particular area uh, topic. So please uh, go through again the course and then try to find out. Uh, these are the these are the material uh, mathematics perhaps uh, it is of Mm, useful to many of you and definitely you just little, do little more uh, hard work. The course material is not very relevant for thermal power stations. Yes, it is It is not targeted to any any such uh, that uh, unit like uh, whether it is a thermal power station or it is a particularly suppose uh, hazardous material transportation or uh, any such uh, application. It is targeted to a common people, common group, basically uh, under the, the to topics, basically are selected and taught in such a manner that you all will have uh, basic knowledge on how industrial safety engineering and how to go about it. When you are interested to apply to a particular uh, facility, then it requires that other, other knowledge, the design knowledge, the hazard knowledge uh, of that particular facility. And, and you need uh, to assimilate all those things into your work, into, because this is the first level course. So first time a deep uh, informative lectures over industrial safety engineering, please aware us about how we could do plan for application based over studies in connection with a techno-commercial managerial approach in combination with the legal requirements related to, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good, uh, I think, futuristic uh, and also from implementation point of view, this question is very good. Yes, you, you are right, basically, uh, although um, uh, so many things are told in, this, in these lectures, but ultimately what will happen unless a proper plan is developed and maybe it may be your plan specific, it may be maybe the, your national, specific, national, national level because something uh, that kind of integrated framework is required. That is the question. And in fact, uh, we all are working, but your question cannot be uh, answered at this short time period and it, it's a project, it's another kind of project. I think if you, if you are interested, so you can write to me separately and then definitely what will happen if some kind of uh, this, this require a project, that is what I am trying to tell you. Uh, I think you are from industry uh, safety professional. So Nitesh Kumar, so um, Okay, if you are from industry, uh, then definitely we can have one-to-one uh, -one talk because this is the need. This is a very important question. 
then second uh, then again maharashtra i think uh, so probably then explain me the cut set and common cost cut sets okay but this course this lecture you please again go through cut set basically we are talking about uh, the faulty point of view so if you understood faulty you will find out that at the bottom of the faulty there are many basic events and at the top of the faulty there is top event so top event we don't want the top event to occur and that's why we develop faulty to know that why top event uh, occurs what are the basic events that mean that the fundamental level what are the uh, what are the causes you can see the root causes so the root causes if we know then ultimately we will be able to eliminate the top event to occur top event is basically uh, a little higher level event which has consequences over the over the operation or the job or the plant itself now it is not that all the uh, all the basic events uh, at the bottom that required to occur for the top event to occur the a, a, a subset of such events will basically sufficient for the top event to occur for example you just think of the uh, supply that suppose your um, ac ac in very simple example that whether in your room the ac is working or ac is not working if it is the top event then immediately you will find out that why ac is not working then there is concept called psc primary failure secondary failure and common failure in the psc concept primary means it is related to the ac so you have to check what is happen, uh, happened in uh, within the in the ac itself suppose the ac there is a motor then in that is there is a gas and other things whether each of them are working or not having a uh, functional or not then the co command will maybe the power supply problem will be there and something like this so when you develop the fault tree then you will find out that maybe power supply will be one basic events in this case and maybe the motor is not working in other basic event gas supply is not there basic event and something like this depending on the nature of the basic event and the top event ac is not working different gates you are using either and and or gate or other kind of gates so now any any basic any basic event or a set subset of basic event that can, can cause the top event that is the cut set now that subset would be minimal means all the basic events with this subset will occur or it can be Uh, even if uh, th there can be more basic events but ultimately the uh, the combination of the failures of the component level will lead to the top level okay and that is basically cut set so you please go through again and common cause cut sets we also give in several example for example you just think of a, a building suppose in the ground floor there are many machines very sensitive machines are there now what will happen suppose the your building is near a railway station so whenever trains are coming and going then that vibration is affecting the ground now if in the ground there are several, there are some machines which are basically vibration sensitive so that means the because of the vibration many of the machines will be will will not work after some time or at at different points on time so then here the common cause is the vibration so in this manner that different coupling mechanism we have explained so the this proximity coupling is this is the example then we talk about common cause coupling uh, so many things are there okay so that you please go through and it is basically you have to first understand what are the common causes and then then you have to find out the find out the locations or the or the equipment which are getting affected by the common causes so whenever that common cause will occur it is likely that it will ultimately affect the uh, affect those but those items those components or those machines so doubt on assignment number 4 question number 6 and 7 i think it is clear now because the this one already submitted how to calculate the average individual risk for all exposed people okay so if you go by individual risk that means anybody 
a single individual or working in a particular place what is the individual support that, that is the risk now average will be some total by the number of people that that basically you are considered so that sense you can compute when when you are using the word individual this individual for this but the there is a catch catch is that usually when there are many people we do not consider individual risks we consider societal risks so as your question is that individual risks for all exposed people so then average calculation the same ever ever calculation what we what we generally do for average calculation will be used but it may not give you that uh, big picture then please explain pha process again that preliminary hazard analysis how it is to be used okay so i am not going to explain the pha process go through the lecture again and understand what is there but uh, only thing that pha is basically a, a top level process basically because it basically talks about almost all the departments all the sections all the machines together and it is basically the broader hazard uh, we basically consider not the nitty gritty of the hazards so in that sense it is basically the first level of work in 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 any industry or plant or any or any organization of uh, risk assessment from safety point and uh, risk point of view then a uh, week 6 assignment how to calculate average individual risk okay for all exposed people so week 5 assignment so fine i think that that will be given yeah, that you are in, in in that particular forum that actually actually the calculation will be provided then your next one is that how to calculate okay again the same question is given so that will be given there and what is the difference between qfd and sfd okay fantastic question so qfd is quality function deployment the purpose is basically how to design quality into product or process repeat how to design quality into the product and process means your product or the process what you are developing that will be quality assured mean that the intended function it will do with adequate the required amount of quality from the specific quality specification point of view and what is sfd safety function deployment it is basically how to design safety into the system whether it may be a product which will be used by the users or it may be a process or a system where many people will be working the basic difference is basically the objective wise one is quality improvement another one is safety improvement and when you go through the procedure the approach approach wise there are little differences and the techniques we use there are differences so uh, so basically in qfd what's and how's are considered particularly what's means the requirement customer requirement how's mean what the features will be inbuilt into the uh, system or the product so that customer requirements are fulfilled the same concept same approach or same concept is used here so what are the customer requirement means the workers or the employees who are working in a plant what is their requirements so broad broad level requirements will be there should not be no accident no injury something like this then how to dig down to the intervention so now uh, the features to be inbuilt into the system from quality point of view here basically what kind of intervention should be uh, should be there in the system so that the the requirement of the stakeholder should be fulfilled in sfd risk it is basically risk is the important part we we find out the hazard then find out the risk and after this we prioritize and then we put the intervention and in then we do some kind of cost benefit analysis that put this intervention will help us improving this much that way it will be do so one is safety improvement another one is quality improvement approach is similar techniques used in computation in different phases are different number of steps will be different to different to to qfd and sfd but we i sfd basically we have uh, proposed and be, and we have basically borrowed it from qfd so course need lectures note in pdf format lecture note okay that is a step uh, okay we'll see
Then use of software for fault tree. There is RAM software which you can use it. Then uh, hello, uh, respected sir. So far I missed those five week courses. I mean, I start now and carry out upcoming assignment. Okay, uh, the, uh, there won't be any issue on getting final certificate. I will say that, okay, you please go through and uh, submit the assignment, all those things, but deadline and certificate point of view, I have no role. So definitely NPTEL that management will help you in this regard. How to, how to study this course so that it gives the best knowledge which can be applicable, like whether to do small projects. See, ultimately you first go through the lectures and understand and definitely if there is a small project, and a real life project that that will, will, will help you a lot and if, if possible i think you should have uh, those who are already enrolled why you make make some kind of small groups also and learn in between in between means amongst your chat some kind of collaborative learning in the sense there are many many and en en people enrolled huge i think in in in, in some thousands of that uh, people are uh, basically going through this. So if you know some of you in the multidisciplinary uh, area, then why can't yourself make some group and uh, develop some project uh, along with this lecture? So that will help you a lot. It's 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 a good pedagogical suggestion. I, I, I appreciate your view. So is the course st structured with resemblance to AIDS and P I don't know what is EDIS and PGDA means safety engineering syllabus content. I am seeking about coverage. I hope so, but I am not sure. Because this is basically that some this kind of course are not available, but based on based on my last 25 years of research, teaching, and consulting experience, I have developed this course. And I think that this would be the this is a uh, good development. So I think that all the colleges, AICP approved colleges and other uh, training institute, if they adopt this, that will be great help to the uh, students uh, in the self safety engineering practitioners and as well as academic people. How can safety be included with software and automation? Like, see, it's, it's another, another um, completely uh, that unexplored area almost because safety engineering or safety related software are limited almost in the name of safety. Some are there, but it is not adequate enough. Obviously that if you can develop, that's great. And I think some of you should try to do this. And automation, yes, automation and the safety are very much related. Because of automation, the hazards are changing and also the, the concepts of safety engineering, whatever we are using. So these, keeping this in, in proper perspective, some kind of changes may be required. You are in right track. Go about, for example, robot safety you are talking about. So robot can be robot and human robot interface, robot to robot interface. Okay, so those things are very, those things are very, very safety uh, critical areas. So why uh, I I I always I'm always apt to it. Suppose a robot is giving me food someday, but what is, what is the guarantee that robot will not hit me? So that sense, uh, these are the new things under Industry 4.0. Uh, you some of you uh, you you develop your career in this particular part. How to crack this exam with high grades? Uh, you you go through the courses very carefully. Most of the times you all listen, but I am telling you, listen is not sufficient. Writing is more important than do, uh, including listening. You listen and write. If you do not make your notes, do forget about high grades. Uh, because I I still understand in in my uh, in our uh, that school days we used to that lekha poda that in Bengali we say lekha and poda. Poda means reading, leka means writing, and suna means you must listen, you must read, you must listen, you must write. 
and writing is very very effective if you are not taking notes not putting your thought into the notes you are not learning much and and getting high grades is the art less and knowledge is important but art is extremely important so risk measures are two types of preventive and mitigative mitigative measures are not for prevention but they help to reduce the loss you are right can you pro please provide ppt for this entire lecture it is easy to it is easy to revise i don't think so because if you are not uh, not able to uh, see the video and then you will and offline you will basically read the ppt i don't think so but anyhow that in it is not my work and nptl is looking after this time is too short to understand and apply for exams and more month would have been comfortable again this is uh, nptl will be able to answer it but i i think that uh, probably Uh, they they have done a uh, lot of uh, study before that and then found out that this kind of schedule so considering so many constraint and the feasibility of uh, that different option feasibility option this is by this this was probably decided so fine related information about industrial safety this entire all information whatever you will getting this is related to industrial safety and you will get other uh, basically suppose there are occupational safety and health guidelines there are many disaster management guidelines there are many bodies like osha nios and there are many indian uh, indian body in national safety council so please go through all those uh, that uh, their sites and find out uh, more material in fact all industries like steel industries like mine industry i like your different regulatory bodies they also provide information related to industrial safety time to time please go with this uh, these documents it needs as pdf format due to making notes because video you can uh, these videos are all available in youtube so you have plenty of repeat views possible so fine i think some of some notes are there probably in pdf but that uh, uh, that may be explored i will just take my th to look into it if it is there but i will inform the uh, or my ta will inform the nptl sir can we get ppt similar question it is becoming difficult to watch all lecture as we have different subjects as well as study in a college so this is not this is not a problem for this subject this is your basically is management problem your time management problem and your um, that you have to look into it how to get you get get rid of this numerical in exam will be given formulas or we have to memorize them mostly because i don't know how much uh, memory is required to know all uh, keep all those things because the mathematical portion very simple mostly simple things are there in general we do not provide the formulas so but if we if any anything which is difficult to memorize such things are there my ta will look into it but but in general we ne we do not provide are you going to share ppt and then can we get pass uh, get past final exam papers can we get past final exam papers i i i hope so it is available or not i i'm not sure but okay i think kanti and uh so big if you can answer this i want to know about software tools related to industrial safety okay so fine actually in the in in the in the forum please give some name of the software like ram c is one software similarly kanti and so big you please keep give some more software what is available just in the forum you post this but none of the softwares are basically all inclusive because the, you may get some software where call tree inventory can is possible some software may be name by name bota is there that kind of things are possible the inclusive you know, all those aspects you will not get so i want to know software 
can by doing this course help me to do rl labor in safety course in of the that okay so regional labor institute safety course you first see their syllabus what is the content and see our syllabus what what you are learning here so then then what you do that what is not taught here you have to learn, you have to go um, what i mean to say that you have to read extra but more or less if the topics matches more or less there should be similarity so but i cannot guarantee this please describe the pattern to be used in exam please last year question and blueprint of paper okay the same thing i uh, i just requested my ts to look into it and nptl uh, will inform nptl accordingly okay so these are the basically in the in the google doc so in the chat box what is they are uh, showing ashi ekanti yes sir the most important question is that what is the difference between developmental cost uh, cost and installation cost which developmental cost in lang factor in lang factor uh, lang factor. What is lang factor calculation okay so fine so um, what you do basically uh, that lang uh, lang factor calculation that one i think that uh, our urundraj paper is there kanti you yes, just sir. that yes, paper sir. you uh, the reference you give it to everyone in the forum in the forum okay yes, so let them go through there we have explained and okay then what is next Next, the same question regarding the uh, sharing of PPT, which is uh, okay. No, no, those question you don't repeat. Okay, okay. So, can I see chat box here also? Yes, sir. In YouTube uh, link, you have to open the YouTube link. No, no. Then you tell. No problem. I am not. Okay. Hmm. Then what is the next one? If some question already I have answered, don't uh, repeat this. What is not answered? Those question you tell me. Okay, sir. So, sir, I am working as HSC professional. Your online courses are very useful. Can you discuss on quantitative risk assessment methodology, which are the good softwares used? Yes, actually, you see the quantitative risk assessment and qualitative risk assessment. The basic difference is that in the first part, you are not talking about risk in terms of some numerical value. in the second case you have put giving some value that is basically the fundamentally if you say that what is the quantitative and qualitative is in qualitative risk basically the numerical well we give basically some kind of scale qualitative scale like high low medium something like this okay now question that is there are the differences in techniques yes there are differences in techniques basically in quantitative risk assessment the the most important one is basically bow tie where the fault tree and event tree is combined what happened basically if i know the top event then if i and i i i deduct the entire the the causes and finally develop the tree and at the basic events label the probability of failure is known so that mean you must have data now data can be of three types one is that data historical information or manufacturer already provided data on the computer component failure from the reliability and failure for failure probability point of view or you have to go by some kind of expert opinion that will be qualitative but it can be converted to probability level also this is high there is there is some high technique which will be used we have not thought to use this one then uh, then finally the top event probability and and using event tree at the end scenario the risk of every scenario it is computed this is the quantitative risk assessment now whether you will use this technique or you will go for some other technique that is that all depends on the requirement point of view okay so it is not that uh, that the that the approach is absolutely different no absolute approach is not absolutely different the difference is in quantification 
Okay, what is what is another question? Sir, um, can you explain uh, Petrinet? Petrinet we have given? No, sir, Petrinet we have not given. Sir. Okay, just one, uh, no, we, we cannot explain Petrinet now because Petrinet is, is a difficult uh, thing. It is not that easy. Just only one thing you have to keep in mind that Petrinet basically it's a dynamic one in the sense uh, basically it considered time. Primarily that sense we want to use Petrinet and that is also time Petrinet. Basically it is not that uh, suppose you think of the any hazard which or any system there are many components human to machine to tech uh, and environment to organization. Over time, it is deteriorating. Now, what will happen? Basically, it is not that uh, that all of a sudden uh, your accident will take place. So, the dynamic nature, if you want to capture, the patent will help you. So, that is one. And there, what happened? The structure is considered, and that uh, structure is primarily there will be some kind of uh, tokens and then some kind of place that is that basically comes from the computer science discipline and C.A. Petri is the basically founder of Petrinet in 1962 he developed it is primary it, it, it is developed for basically software failure um, analysis point of point of view so we have not uh, given any lecture on Petrinet but some uh, papers also available on Petrinet, which are still written by us also. Um, that much, I think. I think uh, it is difficult now. If we upgrade, upgrade the lecture sometime, then Petrinet will be, will be given. Petrinet, there will be transitions and many things are there. It is not easy to uh, explain just uh, all of a sudden that within one or two minutes or five minutes of time. What is the next one? Can some example related to plant and machinery for road construction work be said? Road construction? Hmm. Plant and machinery for road construction work. No, that, that, that is, this is probably, probably the sco out of scope. Because then how, how this course can correlate to functional safety engineering? How this case course correlation correlate to farm. Okay, what is functional safety engineering? Not clear to me. But if you are thinking that functional safety may mean basically suppose a machine is under oper op under operation. So during that time, the, what are the safety issues? If you are uh, talking about this sense that this functional safety, uh, then answer will be one way. Or if you think that no, no, whether the machine is operating or not, that is a different issue. So now I am giving you two uh, two examples. Suppose I I my machine should work for ten hours. Let it be. I said this ten hours, but it is not working for ten hours. Suddenly within seven hours uh, there is a breakdown. Then that reliability engineering concept will help you. So there is overlap between reliability and safety. So that is the part of reliability, but obviously that over uh, because of the overlap, and this is the safety part is there. Second is basically that while uh, the machine is in under in operation, it is it, it has some hazard. It is basically working with certain hazards, and then the employees or the operator who are basically exposed to this machine, he or she might get affected. Then that is a that is basically a design issue. The design issue means the machine should not have any exposed things like the moving moving uh, parts should not be exposed. There must be proper cover guard and other things. Or the facility should be designed in such a manner that within the hazard zone, people should not enter. So that sense, some protective measures and uh, those things should be there. So you have to look into these aspects. So. It, Essentially, if it is the function of the equipment of the machine, then it is the reliability issue. And, and, and if it is basically you are talking about, no, not, not the function. Suppose it is perfectly reliable for 10 hours to work. It is doing it, but it is creating a lot of noise. 
and it it may be may, may be creating a lot of other safety uh, issues so then that that basically a design problem okay or if you say no no operators are basically not following sop then that is basically another administrative problem okay next then in calculating individual risk we have used only frequency and probability but by mm -hmm. definition of risk it is a function of severity also frequency and probability no no yes yes you are right it is basically that in in that particular calculation actually we have given frequency from the uh, probability point of view that yes. means the relative that how many uh, uh, relatively how many are it's a relative frequency kind of thing and in the in the in the case probability is not the probability uh, of the event occurring rather the probability of that particular loss probably in that sense it is given so it is it is probability times severity please check the probability frequency and probability what we have talked about there so far i recall that we talked about frequency from probability point of view because ultimately probability is calculated using the frequency definition and we, we have given the probability of fatality probability in that example probability of fatality fatality is the consequence okay so now you have to multiply the loss related to fatality if you consider that 6000 hour man hour is the loss then 6000 into probability of fatality will be the consequence of severity and the frequency part which is basically which i think with this should be this is relative frequency which is a measure of probability so it is probability times severity you are right and and that probability means probability of event occurring and severity means that that if that event occur what is the loss the loss could be that human loss that mean like fatality serious injury and other things or property loss or environmental loss now in that particular calculation so far i recall we talked about probability of fatality so basically it is basically we are it is a better measure saying only fatality instead of saying fatality if we say probability of fatality it is a better measure one step ahead next Uh, please tell something about entropy risk okay so entropy risk basically you just see that whenever you design a product or process so by by design there are certain inherent hazards which you cannot eliminate because these are required for the functioning of the system for example We, we we our your system without electricity can you thought of you can you may not thought of you cannot most most of the time i am telling about that so very simple when we suppose walk in a shop floor on the shop floor so there is slip and fall related accident big accident will be there so suppose the uh, the floor is quite adequately abrasive enough so that you, you will not slip as well as fall house how house keeping will be very good so that there will be no obstacles like this so that been but even then it is there is no guarantee that there will be no fall or in another case no guarantee that there someone will be electrocuted so that mean that is basically by design some inherent risk is there some inherent hazard are already there because of the functioning of the system and it is obvious now question comes suppose over the time when you use a machine or a facility or a process then over age everything deteriorates human deteriorates machine deteriorates environment deteriorates organization deteriorates unless proper maintenance is made getting me unless proper maintenance and repair actions are made so here the entropy risk comes entropy means distortion or some kind of decaying in the system suppose i i i am teaching you okay i know this subject suppose but over the years what happened the hazards are changing everything is changing but i am not upgrading my knowledge so after some time i will be i will not be able to give you the required competency what is needed 
so that is a deterioration okay so that mean i have to upgrade myself over time otherwise that deterioration will continue that deterioration is measured through entropy risk okay similarly a machine if you do not properly maintain with periodic schedule or with certain condition based monitoring or preventive maintenance what will happen ultimately after some time due to wear and tear and inadequate maintenance what will happen it will fail this is entropy risk it is beyond the inherent or designed risk above all above this risk now your shop floor is very good but your housekeeping is not good you are not maintaining proper housekeeping one day it will be it will be just like a uh, like a mane like store garbage room so so many that cables will be lying here and there lot of obstacles materials will be here and there and even for simple work you cannot move properly so that is what that is also again entropy risk because over design you deteriorated you allowed your system to deteriorate and that amount of deterioration is measured through entropy risk so it is it is that it is the design risk which basically usually protected during design the design intervention should be there it is the entropy risk which over use over time will will be introduced and during design stage you have to understand all those thing and accordingly engineering and administrative control should be in place mostly it is a difficult task but if it is done in the design stage then this is known as prevention through design okay what is next in construction safety so many challenges to reduce the hazard in uh, hazard so in changing activity and manpower how to tackle this situation that question actually it is again i think you, uh, it's a, it's a, it is basically from planning to implementation okay that from top level commitment to bottom level that uh, management so many things are there it is basically that way the concept whatever you are learning here and using all those concept and the experience of the construction sector you have to plan for effective safety management in construction sector and then you you have the timeline and the resources in place the roles and responsibility are fixed and you have to practice it pdca that plan do act a uh, plan do check and act which is used in quality domain you have to follow this and then continuous improvement then it is possible next how safety is related with ergonomics safety is related with ergonomics in the sense that if ergonomics is not properly made or properly assured it leads to safety problem ergonomics is the law of work so that mean your your work job must be ergonomically designed facility must be ergonomically designed other whatever whatever my accessory the control display all those things should be ergonomically designed that mean keeping the worker or the human at the core you have to design the job the workplace the machines operation safety if there is mismatch with human capability and ergonomics uh, the ergonomic design of the facility then what will happen in a long run the fatigue and other fatigue both from physical and mental fatigue uh, and and other symptoms will generate which will ultimately lead to safety problem not only safety problem it will also lead to occupational health problem next ensure iso 45001 instead of oh osas 18001 in week 12 uh, i iso 45001 hmm they are actually asking to include iso 45001 instead of osas 18001 in week 12 okay so that uh, at present osas one i think we have yeah, we have given one lecture probably i just i will check but okay good suggestion that uh, the, that will look into it and in fact uh, that is happening here even there is another one from the asset management point of view i think pass 55000 or something like this so more rules and regulations are coming even osa that mean occupational safety and health act of uh, india 2019 that that co that act and code already developed 
So yes, you are right. All those the new rules and regulations and codes or practices, what is being developed, that that should be included and it should be updated. Next. Yes, sir. We have almost answered all the questions. The rest okay. of the questions are related to assignments that we have already answered in the Google Sheet. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, for your kind and patient sharing. And obviously, this is a this is a area which is developing and which will be de and developing and it is rapid rapidly developing. So uh, please uh, do the needful accordingly. I hope all of you will be. Uh, all of you are learning and you will be definitely getting the uh, the objectives fulfilled but particularly what for what purpose you are here that will be fulfilled but please remember it is not a one time game that okay it's just now i have read something or listened something i am knowledgeable it is it, it will never happen you have to work in this field do project uh, and also go for collaborative learning uh, and so many, and take challenges related to safety and industry. My industry friends, you start developing that management action plan for this, and definitely you will be champion. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So, 